While they may seem like nothing but a futuristic substance from another time, marshmallows are actually one of the most ancient treats in the world dating all the way back to ancient Egypt thousands of years ago when people used to make fluffy sweet treats using starch, wheat, and sap. But how exactly does something so chewy but so airy come to be? Let's find out. Collecting the Ingredients Unlike olden times when marshmallows were made with sap from the marshmallow plant, nowadays marshmallows are made from just a few major ingredients that can be divided into a few groups. First are the main components that make up the bulk of the food, which are a lot of corn syrup, corn starch, and water. Depending upon the company, stuff like wheat flour or even egg whites may also be used. Secondly, there's stuff like the flavors, colors, preservatives, and chemical stabilizers, all to make sure that the cloudy sugary treats remain as puffy for as long as possible. And finally, there is the ingredient that holds everything together and gives marshmallows their characteristic bouncy feel, gelatin. Gelatin is the same substance used to make jello, gummy bears, and even some jams and soups. And in all those places, it plays the role of giving things a solid, chewy, and jelly-like texture. That being said, the production of gelatin is a lot less sweet and candy-like as it's actually derived from animal bones and connective tissue after they've been discarded. Nonetheless, whether the ingredients are gathered from the first step of marshmallow making begins as long as everything enters the first door. And that step is mixing the ingredients. I know it's a bit of a lackluster step, but don't be fooled. Even a single bad streak or slightly unmixed batter can greatly change the outcome of how a marshmallow is going to form. This is why a lot of companies go to great lengths to make sure that mixing conditions like temperature, speed, and moisture all remain the same. Regardless of that, this step takes place in two different stages. In the first stage, the main ingredients like cornstarch, corn syrup, and any egg whites or wheat are mixed together for a few minutes. Then, once they form a rudimentary slurry, a set amount of clean water is added, which is then both mixed and brought to a boil and continued to mix at around 240 degrees Fahrenheit. This cooks the cornstarch or any other raw ingredients and also helps the mixture come together into one good uniform mass. That being said, to make sure no unmixed chunks of material remain in the final product, the whole mixture is passed through a strainer to remove any remaining clumps, which is the second stage. And so from here, we move on to the next one, whipping. Now, you might have noticed that we still haven't added any gelatin or any of the flavorings or chemical agents to the mix. This is because they're added once the mixture has become homogenized immediately before it goes through yet another rough mixing regimen. And this time, instead of slow, heavy mixing, the mixtures mix super fast so as to aerate the whole thing much like how you would make whipped cream. This is also why some people like to say that air is the fourth kind of ingredient that makes a marshmallow a marshmallow. This is exactly how things like macaroons are made from aerated egg whites, or how cream goes from a liquid to a thick solid mass that is still spreadable. And besides the aeration, another important marshmallow making step also takes place during this time. You see, while the mixture is thoroughly being beaten by industrial mixers, the gelatin slowly relaxes and binds the entire mixture together while also trapping a ton of air inside to create the end fluffy product while at the same time, it also adds a lot of chew and structure to the previously vicious liquidy mixture. Now, once the mixture has been thoroughly whipped until it reaches double or triple its original volume, it can be transferred to the next step, the most obvious one, the shaping. Now, if you were making marshmallows at home, at this point, you would simply set the mixture aside in a pan to cool, but in a factory, the process looks a lot different. In fact, the best way to describe it would be to compare it to a pasta extruder. You see, the whipped mixture, once it's been cooled down sufficiently, but not too much as to still keep it shapeable, it is sent onto a conveyor belt where a ton of shapers form the entire thing into one long slab of the marshmallow mixture. This slab is then sent into a heat exchanger where cool air is sent through the marshmallows, further making them fluffy while also cooling the slab down so it holds its shape. Then, before it can cool down completely, it's passed through a mold which turns the paste into long tubes. These tubes can be twirled around like a rope to create special shapes combined together to make double flavored marshmallows or extruded as is. And almost immediately after passing the extruder, 
a very sharp slicer cuts the marshmallows into their signature cylindrical shape. From there, a machine dusts them with a mixture of sugar and cornstarch to prevent them from sticking together and giving them that smooth candy-like texture that we know and love. At this point, we are pretty much done, but some residual heat still remains, which brings us to the next step, cooling. Once the marshmallow pillows, as they are referred to, fall into a massive drum so they can reach room temperature, this drum also serves the purpose of mixing the marshmallows together by spinning them fast, which gets rid of excess powder while also distributing it evenly. And once they have cooled down completely, they fall onto another conveyor belt, which takes them to the next and one of the last stations, testing. Now, while their recipe might sound simple, as we mentioned earlier, a slight variation in the amounts of the ingredients or mixing can change a lot, leading to too gooey, sticky, or tough marshmallows. This is why before a batch can be packaged, it's checked by a few workers for a bunch of things. One of them involves what is called a snap test, where a marshmallow is cut and pressed onto to see how long it takes to bounce back. Packaging. Now, homemade marshmallows are not designed to have a long shelf life, but as a result of the factory's clean environment and the preservatives added to the mixture, as long as they remain sealed, marshmallows can stay good for a long time. And to make sure that nothing interferes with that, marshmallows are packaged in high quality preserving bags. These bags come in the form of a long sheet, which is cut and sealed at the same time using a heated metal tool. From there, a couple of folders make it into a bag onto which a digital scale deposits a specified weight of marshmallows. A pump then fills the bags with nitrogen, which pushes out any oxygen and makes sure that stuff stays as clean as possible for the longest time and another pair of heated rods seal the bag immediately afterwards. From there, a printer inscribes best before dates and serial numbers on the packets before a carousel collects them all and sends them off to cardboard boxes where they are packed, sealed, and shipped off to retail stores. And that's really all that it takes to create something as ethereal as a s'more from just a handful of pretty simple ingredients, somehow connecting your camping trips to the lands and traditions of ancient Egypt. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.